Hey, welcome back to another coding challenge video. Today we're going to be looking at the 2D Array DS problem from HackerRank. We'll be doing this one in C Sharp. So what's going on here is we're going to be given a 6x6 array of integers. And they're telling us that um, this shape right here, they're going to be calling an hourglass. And we're going to be calculating the sum of all of the hourglasses within the 6x6 array. So looking at this one right here and this pattern down here, our first hourglass is going to be this set of ones. So let's look at our constraints. So it says every element in the array is going to be between negative 9 and 9. And then they give us the indices, which is sort of weird in my opinion, but they go from 0 to 5. Basically what they're saying is the array is guaranteed to be 6 by 6. Um, that's, that's pretty important to know. Um, this problem would definitely be possible with arrays of different sizes, but relying on the fact that it's 6 by 6 um, is going to save us a lot of bounds checking and a lot of headache. So... That's definitely going to come in handy. Um, let's look at this sample input output real quick before we get into the code, um, just to make sure that we are really understanding what this hourglass is doing. So it's kind of breaking apart this input right here into all the possible hourglasses. You can see the first one's all the ones. And then the next one shifts over. Be right here and so on and so forth. So things to note, I guess, is that you cannot have partial hourglasses. So you can't have this being like the center of an hourglass. Center meaning this is what I would call the center right here. One, zero, zero. So this corner right here cannot be a center and have like this little piece be an hourglass. We, we only want whole hour, hourglasses. Um, that's also going to come in handy because if if we kind of go off the fact that we we are going to only be looking at the centers and then calculating the other value, getting the other values based off of the center, um, then we can save ourselves a lot of bounds checking. By bounds checking, I mean so say we we did look at this value on the edge here, which we can easily see as humans with eyeballs, we can see that that's not gonna be a valid hourglass. So the computer can't easily see that. What the computer's gonna to have to do is say, you know, what's, can I, can I get the upper left value right here? And if we don't check that correctly, then it's gonna throw an exception. And so to avoid even having to check, we'll just not even look at anything on the edge. We've just, We'll just pretty much say, based on how we set up our for loops, I don't want to even look at anything on the edge and consider that to be a potential center candidate. Okay, so let's, let's get into it. So first things first, we're going to have to have a list that is going to keep track of all the sums that we have calculated so far. So let's go ahead and make that. That's going to be an integer. And we'll just call it sums and initialize it to a new integer. And usually like to just set up the return value right after that. So we know we're going to be returning the largest thing in sums. We'll just use the um, link call to max. And that is all we have to do with that. So now we get into the actual calculation, the actual work. So we're gonna need a nested for loop to go over all the rows and all the columns. Um, the problem suggests i and j, which are the typical, it, they're, they're the typical variables that you see um, used in, in for loops. When I'm dealing with two-dimensional arrays, however, I kind of like using x and y a little bit more um, because I like to kind of think as, of 2D arrays as sort of like a coordinate system. And in math, uh, I mean, you could call the x-axis the 
i axis and the y axis the j axis but it's just it, it, or i guess that's vice versa but anyway it gets kind of confusing so i like to use x and y so let's just say um integer y y is going to be our outer loop and we're going to initialize it to one we're initializing it to one because we don't want like i was saying we're we're going to skip the edges so this is when y equals one we're looking at this row right here so we're just going to start off on this one and similarly we're going to have to check and not um, continue if y is on the fifth or sorry the sixth row is it the fifth row is it the sixth row is this the first row or the zeroth row that's i never know how to translate into english anyways so y is less than five that's pretty much what we're getting what we're going for we don't want y to equal five when y is equal to five we were looking at this last row and we'll just increment it after every uh loop through that so x is going to be pretty much the same we're going to start at one to skip the first column and we're going to go until x is less than five which will skip the last column and we'll increment x so now we're going to have to calculate our sum and so we know we set up our for loop so that we can iterate over every center hourglass position so from every center we're going to want to get upper left the, uh, the uh, upper middle the upper right and then the lower left lower middle lower right we don't have to worry about the left or right values so this is kind of a weird case where formatting your code is is going to be really handy in readability um, i don't really know why you would ever do this in industry in a real application but there are some cases where you know use use white space to your advantage uh, the, the compiler doesn't care about white space it, it's it's gonna it's gonna take out all of it anyway so you might as well use it to your advantage and increase the readability of your own code um so let's start with the upper left value how would we get that well first we're going to be looking at stuff in the array so we'll call that and then we have kind of two um, coordinates i guess that you could kind of refer to those as so y is going to be first and because y is flipped we're going to say y minus one and usually i put spaces around these operators but i'm not going to and you'll see why in a second but why is y minus one well we have to remember that our y axis is flipped and by flipped i mean in, in a math coordinate system you would kind of expect y equals zero to be this one and then y equals one y equals two well in programming it's flipped it's this is y equals zero y equals one and it goes down so if we're looking at this value if we want to calculate the upper left this being y we're going to have to say y minus one to get from y equals one to y equals zero okay so similarly with x x is going x is what you would expect x minus one we expect this to be one and this to be zero or sorry this to be one this to be zero and so to get it from x equals zero, uh, one to x equals zero we're just going to minus one all right that was a really lengthy uh, explanation and probably really terrible so now we're going to want the upper middle so we're still going to be going up a row so we'll keep the y minus one and then we're not going to be modifying x we want straight up and so keeping with that pattern y minus one to be on the same row and then x will actually be um we'll add one to x so now that we got our top row let's actually utilize our white space go on the next row and tab over and do the middle value so array this is the easiest one whatever we're at y and x 
and then we'll add our next plus. I think you can probably see w w how I'm using the white space to my advantage now. It's starting hopefully to look like what we're trying to calculate. It's looking at like the capital I, like the hourglass. Okay, so now, and, and doing it this way is kind of like easier to see and, and, and just kind of without even much thought know what the uh, next y and x value is going to be. So y is going to be adding one. So we have y minus one and then y and then y plus one. And if we wanted to get like another row, then we'd go y plus two. I mean, so the x value is going to be the same as the top row. We'll say uh, x minus one. This one will be y plus one and x. And this last one will be y plus one, x plus one. Close that off with a semicolon. So, yeah, like I said, compiler does not care about white space. Doesn't care that we have a carriage return there. It's just going to pop that all out anyways. So, still have to have one semicolon here, but you don't have to have one at the end of the line. Um, yeah, so the last thing we're going to want to do is we're going to add sum to sums. And that is it. So let's go ahead and run this code. I'm sure we didn't miss anything. Okay, it looks like it's solved. Submit the code. See if it passes all of its test cases. Sweet, looks good to me. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, thanks for watching.